What is up my friends? One of the baits that we get questions on all the time here in the shop is the football jig. Now, this guy has been around forever, but it still seems to be one of the most misunderstood baits that we sell in the shop. What jig do I throw? What trailer do I put on it? What rod do I use? Where am I throwing it? So today, we're gonna break down my style of football jig fishing. We're gonna break down my favorite three football jigs, all the trailers I use on it, the gear you need to throw it, and we're gonna talk through the process. So if you're ready to talk all things football jigs, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, AKA the Tackle Otaku, being filmed by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We are the Hookup Tackle USA. Today, we are doing a deep dive into one of my favorite baits, and that is the football jig. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the football jig, then you must be new to bass fishing because this guy has been around for ages and ages and ages. Pretty much every brand in the world makes some form of football jig. But what football refers to is basically the shape of the head. You'll notice it's kind of shaped like a football, right? It's more of a oval shaped head versus a round shape or a ball head or a flipping style head that's more pointed or a grass head or a swim head. This guy is designed to get down on the bottom and bang around on rocks and structure. The idea behind a football jig is if you've got rocks sitting like this, the football, because it's oval, will kind of bounce and crawl up and over them and snag much less than say something that's got a pointed head or a round head or something that's just gonna kind of wedge in the cracks. So when we're fishing bottom, we're fishing structure, the football jig is just, it's a staple. It's something that's tied on, you know, out here in Arizona, I'd say it's tied on probably nine or 10 months out of the year for us. We're fishing a lot of offshore structure, a lot of rock piles, a lot of reefs. This is also a great bait just for running bank, you know, running riprap running rocky banks, that kind of stuff, just because it really comes out of rock really, really well. And the football jig has a great hookup ratio to it. So, you know, anytime I can get away throwing a football jig, this is usually the jig I go to. So what Jeff and I decided to do today is just kind of answer some questions that we get over and over again here in the store. What's the best jig? How do I stop losing them on a jig? What's the trailer I get? all these kind of questions, I'm just gonna break it down really simply for you. So for me, I use three jigs. So this is gonna be a pretty easy, Ben's top three football jigs. Sound good, Jeff? Oh yeah. Okay, so really quickly, let's just decipher here really quick, a football jig and a finesse football jig, okay? So what I have here in my right hand is a pretty normal football jig. What I have here in my left hand is a finesse football jig, okay? So you can see the size difference. So when I refer to things as, you know, regular football jig or finesse football jig, this is what I'm referring to. It's really a size thing, okay? So let's start with regular football jig, okay? This is normally where I start because I like it big. The big girls like it big, right? So if I can get away throwing a bigger jig, a full size jig, I can fish faster, I can fish bigger, bulkier down there. I just have a lot of confidence that I'm gonna get a really big bite doing it, right? So for me, I use one full size jig. I have basically thrown every full size jig on the market. I've thrown them all over the country, down in Mexico and Japan. The one I go back to every single time 
is the Dirty Jigs Tour Level Skirted Football Jig. I love this jig. And really, I love this jig because they eat it and I land a lot of them. Okay, this isn't necessarily the jig with the highest end components. It's a lead head, it's not tungsten. It's got a rubber banded skirt, not hand tied. But what this does is it's got a super high strand skirt. So I get all the bulk that I need out of a skirt. And because it's real high strand, it doesn't wear out like a lot of banded skirts do. It's got the perfect eye tie to hook to head ratio. Okay, you're gonna hear me talk about that a lot today. So basically what that means is I don't want the eye to be you know, too far left, too far right, too perfectly straight. I don't want it to get in the way of the hook point. When I swing on the fish, I want there to be all this gap between that eye and that hook, right? I want that guard to go down and I want that big hook in the back to get them, right? So my hookup ratio, my land ratio is amazing on this thing. So I just stay here. I pretty much probably, I would say 80% of the time, throw a three quarter ounce, 20% of the time throw a half ounce. I really never throw anything lighter or heavier than that anymore. And for me, the three quarter just allows me to cover water really fast. I can fish very quickly in both deep and shallow. If I'm fishing 30 feet, the guy gets down there faster than waiting for a half ounce. If I'm fishing the bank, I can fish really fast and cover a lot of ground with the three quarter. And then if they're just not responding to it, I can drop down to a half ounce and it's easy for me. Now, there are times and places where you guys may find that going to a quarter ounce or a three eighth ounce or something like that might be a better option, or even bumping up to an ounce or heavier might be an option. But I find that once I go above a three quarter ounce, especially after I put my trailer on it, it just gets so heavy and so bulky that I need a totally different rod setup to really pick the cover apart. And I like, I just like the way the three quarter uh, and the half ounce perform. So this is pretty much where I live. I don't do a lot of altering to these things out of the package. So this one came straight out of a package. Typically what I would do on a jig is I like to trim the weed guard just above the hook. Okay. So pretty much every jig manufacturer, if they come with a weed guard, is just going to kind of put a generic size in there and they're almost always much longer than they need to be. Right. So again, I want to try to make this as easy as possible for the bass to get it and have that collapse, but still leave enough weed guard on there so that if it does come across a, a bush or something, it's not going to snag super easily. Okay. So the way that would look, let me grab some scissors on that weed guard. We're basically just going to trim off, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, and that's better. Right. And I usually just kind of expand it out. So that way I've got some cover deflection, but it compresses really, really easy on there. Okay. On the skirt, most of the time, Kurt does an amazing job getting these skirts exactly right, but sometimes I might trim it, right? So I might just pull it down a little bit and I feel like it's too much bulk. I can come in and just kind of trim just a little bit. A lot of this is going to depend on the trailer that I'm using. Also, I really just want the whole thing to look natural. And as a package, I just want it to look kind of like a crawdad or a fish or whatever it is I'm imitating down there on the bottom. All right, let's talk about trailers since we just brought that up. Really, once you have your jig dialed, right? And again, for me, I keep it simple. Half ounce and three quarter ounce on my full size football. Pretty simple. And then color wise, I have usually a combination of some green pumpkin type colors, some watermelon type colors, and then usually some type of shad color. I'd say 95% of the time it's a green pumpkin or watermelon. And it can be something like this where it's both, right? So this is magic crawl. You have some watermelon red, you have some green pumpkin, right? It could be something like this, California 420, where you've got some, some black, some green pumpkin, some watermelon, but just something kind of crawfish ish, right? That's pretty much it. So the trailers are going to allow me to change the action of the jig. So by using one jig, I could utilize four or five different trailers and have it look completely different on the bottom. And that's really the key to football jig fishing is you can almost always catch them on a jig, 
it's figuring out which trailer to go with it that will get the bites because sometimes they're really active and they want the trailer to have a lot of movement. Sometimes they're really lethargic and they want the trailer to be really calm, right? By changing up the trailer, you can really change how the fish are gonna react to your jig. So let's go through a few of my favorite ones. So my starting point with jig trailers, almost always with the full size jig, is just an old school Yamamoto double tail grub, okay? This guy's been around for 9 million years. Maybe 10 million, Jeff. Is that how old you are? Well, when I don't shave, I look at that old <laughs> yeah. with all my gray beard. This is the five inch double tail from Yamamoto, okay? So again, I just kind of match the colors of green pumpkin, green pumpkin candy, whatever. But that guy on the back, it's just gonna have all these legs back there. So as it moves, it's just gonna have this kind of swimming action, right? It's not too much action, but it's not real lethargic either. It's just kind of that middle ground, right? So I can just, I can fish it fast and it's gonna have some movement to it. I can drag it really slow and it'll have just a little pulse. There's a lot of different things I can do with it. So this, for a starting point, is almost always the Yamamoto Grub. Now, if I find that they're not reacting to that well, and I know they're down there, but they're just not eating it, then what usually goes through my mind is that it's too much action, right? So when it's too much action and I need to calm it down, that's when I generally switch to a craw. Now, the depth spiny craw is one of my favorites. The OSP Dole Live craw is the other one I throw a lot. But the idea behind a craw is that the claws are just more straightforward. So instead of having all the, you know, moving kind of action, it's just gonna have kind of a, a flop to it. So it's gonna be a little bit more subtle. The other thing that I'll do a lot is I'll go with a beaver style bait, okay? And when I do this, I almost always go to the Doe Live beaver. The other one I'll use sometimes is the Reaction Innovations beaver if I just want it to be very, very calm. But what's cool about the Doe Live beaver, and you can go with the four inch size on this guy, is the shape of the beaver here it has, you can see how it kind of folds on itself, right? So the design of this is for this beaver to fall and it's gonna pulse on the way down. So if I'm doing a lot of like lifting and dropping and I want my jig to be hopping more than just kind of dragging on the bottom, going to a beaver is a great way to get a totally different look. It's gonna give it a lot of action. It's gonna swim and kick on the way down. So it's gonna pulse up and then it's gonna swim and kick as it falls, right? So any kind of lift and drop, usually this is the direction I go. Now, if they're feeding on fish and not crawdads, okay? And sometimes it's hard to know, right? Especially if you're fishing structure, right? If you're throwing out into 20 feet, into 30 feet, you gotta, you just gotta kind of guess at what they're eating. And, and so if you're throwing a jig, we always kind of assume that a jig is a crawdad imitation. But the minnows live down there, bluegills live down there, gobies live down there, baby bass live down there, right? Shad, all that shit lives in the same place. It all lives at the bottom. It's not like the bass is at 30 feet and the crawdads are at 30 feet, but all the minnows are at 10 feet, right? They're all kind of living down the same place. So again, you gotta start somewhere. So if my starting point is a double tail grub, that's great. But I'm paying attention to the fish when I'm lipping them, okay? And if I lip the bass and its teeth are very, very sharp, that tells me it's eating bait and not crawdads, okay? If I lip the bass and its teeth, its jaws are relatively smooth, well, that tells me it's eating crawdads and not bait. Okay, and then I try to adjust my presentation accordingly. And the reason why their teeth are gonna be much more prominent when they're eating bait is when they're sucking a crawdad off the bottom, they're also inhaling rocks and pebbles and sand and different things. Because remember, the crawdads, crawdads sitting here, right, crawling around. The bass is just going and it's sucking it in, right? But anything in this area is also sucking in. So the teeth will get grinded from the rocks and the pebbles and that kind of stuff. So generally a crawdad eater is gonna have a smoother jaw. Whereas a bait eater 
is more, you know, this thing's just swimming around and then it's, it's just getting it and there's nothing but water and scales, right? So there's nothing to really grind their teeth down so their teeth will be very sharp. When that happens, when I know they're feeding on bait, right? And a lot of you guys live, you know, up north where gobies are a much bigger presence than like a crawdad would be, right? I'm gonna share a couple, couple tricks with you. And everybody's gonna be mad at me that I'm letting this out of the bag, but fuck it. I want everybody to catch some fish. So, one of my favorite jig trailers, period, right, is this dude. Mega Bass has it on shed. Now, this is a swim bait, but behind a jig, it's unbelievable. And this specific guy, so the 4.2 inch size in this green pumpkin watermelon is unbelievable. Of course, you get whatever color you want to get, right? But it just, it matches so perfectly and it sits back there so well that this is just a beautiful, you can drag it, you can swim it, you can hop it, you can lift it. And it's just the perfect size on the back of a football jig. And you just have that tail back there, you know, just subtly swimming, just like a bait fish. And it gives it a much more lifelike look to what they're used to seeing down there and what they're actually feeding on, okay? So gobies, bluegills, shad, baby bass, any of that kind of stuff. 4.2 has it on shad on the back of a dirty jigs football jig. It's game over. Okay. Try it. You guys will smoke them on it. Now, <clears throat> the last thing I will use as a trailer, and this is something I learned when I was fishing down in Mexico a lot. If your fish are feeding on tilapia, right? If tilapia is the main food source, and a lot of you guys live in places where tilapia is the main food source. When a tilapia feeds on the bottom and same thing really with gizzard shad as well, right? So if gizzard shad are a main forage for them, when you watch those fish feed, if this is the bottom, right? Tilapia and gizzard shad, they kind of just, they sift through the silt and they kind of eat like this, right? They're kind of always up at an angle and they're just kind of going along the bottom. The bass are used to seeing them moving along the bottom like that. You throw a football jig with a little craw trailer down there, it doesn't look anything like it. It looks like a crawdad. They're like, why am I eating a fucking crawdad? I mean tilapia, right? So when that happens, this is my trailer of choice. Yamamoto six inch Senko. Now you could, you could try a five inch, you could go up to a seven. Seven just gets heavy. The six inch is super, super simple to work. And I know this seems crazy and it seemed crazy to me the first time that it was recommended to me as well, that you got this big, huge dong hanging off the back of your jig, right? But this is what they're used to seeing. They're used to seeing this thing down there moving like this and then falling and then moving and then falling and then right? They're used to seeing more of a fishy type motion than just something that's just kind of dragging on the bottom like a crawdad. So if you guys are fishing around tilapia eaters, try it. Try the big Senko on the back of it. I think you will be shocked how many fish you catch. All right, let's talk about the next uh, really, this is going to be number two and number three for me, okay? So, dirty jigs, that's my starting point. That's my full-size jig. It's really the only one I use, okay? If they're just not eating it, then it's time to downsize, okay? And this is where I go to more of a finesse football jig, okay? Now, I would say that the way fishing ends up working out, I probably spend half my time throwing the finesse, and half my time throwing the full size football jig. If I'm fishing smallmouth, I'm almost always starting at finesse, right? So a lot of this just depends on the type of lake, right? If it's real rocky, if there's smallmouth, if I know they're feeding on smaller presentation, if the lake's getting a lot of pressure, then I go to the finesse right out of the gate, right? If there's lots of brush, if there's big fish, if it's not getting a lot of pressure, I usually go to the full size football jig right out of the gate. Now. Most people, when they think finesse football jig, they usually just immediately assume that they go here. And this is the K-Tech tungsten football jig. It's a great jig. It's been on the market for ages. It's pretty cheap by tungsten football jig standards. We sell nine gazillion of these things, right? And you'll love them. You get these things, you're, you're gonna love them. But this is not one of my jigs. This is not one that I use in my arsenal. And I'll tell you why. The challenge with the K-Tech football jig, okay, is 
the hook to I. With that weed guard, there's just not enough of it there. Okay, so here's here's the K-Tech. All right, I'm only showing you because I know a lot of you guys are using this jig. And I answer this question a lot here in the store. If you're using this jig and your hookup to land ratio is amazing, then keep throwing this jig. Okay, it's a great jig. It's, it's made out of great components. But here's the problem. There is hardly any bite here from the, the eye to this hook. There's very little space. Okay, so what ends up happening a lot is you hook them, right? And they come up and jump and they throw your shit and ah, fuck, I lost it, right? And we, we get this over and over and over again that you guys are losing a lot of fish on the finesse jigs and that's why. Okay, there's just not enough gap there, especially if you're throwing it in the deep water and it's way down there, right? And you're, there's just not enough space, okay? So, what do I do? I go here instead, okay? So this is my finesse jig of choice. This is the Depths Headlock Jig, okay? And the reason I go here, well, a couple reasons, but the biggest reason is, is that I land them, okay? So for me, getting pikes, hooking them, uh, Jeff and I were talking about this earlier. We were throwing a frog around a little bit earlier. It's like, it's great to watch him eat it, but you got to land the fuckers, right? So if landing fish is important to you, this is a jig you're going to add to your lineup, okay? Let me show you this guy. Now, first off, I will point out there is no weed guard on this jig. So if you guys are fishing around a lot of wood, this is a bad idea, okay? So stay with me and I'll get to that jig. Okay, but if you guys are fishing rock or grass or things to where, you know, you're not going to snag this in wood and then you're going to lose your $8 jigs over and over and over again, you're going to love this jig. Okay, now you'll notice that the eye tie of this jig is almost pointed backwards. Okay, so most jigs, it, they're pointed straight up or forward. So here's the K-Tech again. So k -Tech's going straight up. Okay. Notice this one is going backwards, okay? Reason for that is you're not gonna be here. As you pull, it's rotating the jig upwards, okay? So the jig's laying down the ground. As you pull it forward, it's moving it up. Does that make sense? So whatever trailer you have back there is going to rock upwards before it moves, okay? So it just has this amazing lifelike look. If you look at a crawdad on the bottom, right? It's not always just kind of dragging around on the bottom. No, it's claws go up and then it kind of skirts away and moves away, right? So you're getting that same look out of it. Now, the reason the hookup ratio is so good on this thing is if you look at that hook, it's more of like a circle hook style or like a mosquito hook style, right? So it's got more of a rounded bend to it versus like a big stout jig hook like I had on that dirty jigs. So that dirty jigs, when you get bit on that thing, right, you're throwing it out there, it's down the bottom and it goes, Funk, right? You're winding down, you're cracking the whip on it. With the headlock jig, all you're gonna do is you're gonna throw it out there, you're gonna feel the thunk, and you're just gonna wind tight and just lift, right? It's just a pressure, you're just applying pressure. Same as like a nose hook drop shot. And that hook will notch them every time right in the hard part of the mouth and you're gonna land them, okay? So can't say enough good things about it. It's an amazing jig. It does have, you know, a little wire keeper. It's got the hand tied skirt. It's got a nice thick skirt to it as well. It's just a really, really good jig, okay? Now, if you're fishing around wood, that jig sucks, right? Because it's gonna snag every branch that you come to. So when it comes to that, I go to the OSP hunch jig. Now the hunch jig is kind of a hybrid ball head, football jig kind of combo, okay? I consider it more of a football jig than anything else, but it's a little more rounded than some of the others. So you can see, it's just got a little more of a round shape, but still that kind of oval football jig shape. But again, you'll notice that the line tie is kind of going backwards. So again, kind of the same thing. As you pull forward, it's going to rotate up, right? does have a weed guard on it, so you're not gonna get snagged in all the brush. It has plenty of bite in there so that when you swing, there's plenty of distance. It's just a much longer hook, right, than that K-Tech is. 
I just feel like that cage is just not a long enough hook. It just doesn't sit back far enough, so there's not enough gap in there, okay? It's got a hand trim skirt, hand tie. It's got all the cool shit, right? But it's a great one. You can skip docks with this. You can throw it on bluff wall. You can do all kinds of shit with it. But really, this is my jig when I'm around wood. This is my jig when I'm around rock and aquatic vegetation, not worried about snagging, okay? Now, let's talk about trailers, because again, same thing as with the full-size jig, trailers make all the difference in the world. My starting point with my finesse jigs almost always is the three inch OSP Dull Life Curl. Okay, it's just super natural. It's the right size. It fits very clean. And for me, the majority of time when I'm thinking finesse jig, I'm thinking a little crawdad, right? So the Dull Life Curl just has these nice big pinchers on it. It fits on that guy really, really well. And it's just a nice compact offering that looks just like a little crawdad crawling around on the bottom. So again, I keep my colors simple, green pumpkin and watermelon type colors. Maybe mix in a shad or a black and blue depending on where I am, but just kind of mix and match the trailers to the skirt. So there's my starting point. Another great crawl is the Yamamoto Fat Baby Crawl. Now this was the crawl that we used for, you know, decades before the Dole Life Crawl came out. It's still just an amazing crawl. Pretty much the same style of crawl. So you, you don't necessarily need both of these. Pick a crawl, right? There's not a lot of movement to either of these crawls. It's just kind of a natural profile, right? So you can see almost the same size, kind of the same idea, kind of the same shape. So I generally just go to the Dole Life crawl, but either way is fine. They're both great trailer options, okay? now. If I need it to have a little more motion to it, a little more movement to it, I do the same thing that I was doing on the bigger jig and I go to the beaver. Now, when you go down to the three inch beaver, you get that same kind of kicking action, but you also get some kind of dangly tentacle thingies, right? So you're just gonna get a little bit more life, especially on the lift and drop, you're just gonna get a little more action under the water. It's really finessey, it's really small, real subtle, but you get that little scurry action out of it. You can also go down to the four inch double tail grub and just cut a little bit off and that'll give you even more action if you need more life out of it. Finally, if they're feeding on bait, right? Again, same thing. I'll drop down to the Hazadong Shad and I'll just match my colors, right? So I can use the green pumpkin watermelon. I could use a Western blue or green pumpkin blue, but this time I'm going to the three inch size instead of the 4.2. This is going to do the same thing. If you guys are fishing around smallmouth, I'm telling you, you will, you will destroy them on this little combo, especially if they're feeding on gobies or any of that kind of stuff. This is just deadly down there. So the little Hazadong Shad in the back of a little finesse football jig, it's money. Just changes it up, looks very lifelike, just like a bait fish. All right, let's quickly talk through rods, reels, and line, just to make sure that you guys have the right gear for this. Now, typically, when we're looking for a jig rod, I'm looking for something that is more of a traditional fast taper, right? So I usually want my rod to be heavier in power than lighter because Remember, when you look at the lure rating on the rods, it may say something like, you know, five sixteenths to three quarter ounce, but that's total weight. So if I'm throwing a half ounce jig and I put a trailer on it, it's going to weigh about three quarters of an ounce. So if it says three quarter on the rod and I get a three quarter ounce jig and I put a trailer on it, it's going to be closer to an ounce. It's going to feel real soggy on my rod right? So I'm generally looking for a heavy or extra heavy power in my jig rod. So, you know, in Loomis, that would be a four power or a five power, right? And basically what that fast taper is going to do is it's going to have just a little bit of a tip at the top, right? But then it's pretty much going to be all backbone, right? I want that rod to be real fast so that as I'm lifting up over rocks or, you know, over the structure and it's falling, you can feel the slack line bite. Okay, so a lot of times you lift your jig up and it falls and it's falling like this. And as it's falling, they'll eat it. They'll suck it in and you'll just feel a little thunk, 
your rod needs to be real fast for that sensitivity to transfer. If your rod is too soft, right? If your rod bends too far down, right? So if it's bending too far in the middle, what's happening is when it's falling on that slack line, all that, that thunk and that transmission of sensitivity is getting absorbed by your rod being too soft at the top end, okay? So some great jig rods. For me, a four power, five power NRX, the P5, uh, X bites when they're around is great for the finesse stuff. You know, St. Croix makes a great one, Legend Extreme, all the way down, right? You can get the Zodius, X Bride, like everybody kind of makes a heavy powered fast action rod. Generally, somewhere between seven, seven and a half feet is what we're looking for. And again, that's just based on casting. So if you're fishing more open water, I'd go with a longer rod, a 7.5, 7.6. If you're fishing more just kind of running bank, I would stay in you know a 6.9 to 7.2, something like that. If you're fishing really tight, skipping docks like that, maybe a 6.6 to 7 foot, right? So just adjust it based on your needs, okay? As far as reels go, you're gonna wanna stay in a high speed, seven to one, eight to one, something like that. I prefer eight to ones, seven to one is fine as well. Basically, the reason you're going high speed on the jig versus mid speed or low speed, if your bait is way out there and you get a bite, right? When a fish eats a jig and it sucks it in, it very rarely just eats it and stays there. It almost always eats it and then kind of swims away and moves away. So if you get bit, right, you're pulling your jig up and all of a sudden it's way up here and thunk, you get bit up here and the fish is swimming towards you, you want that reel to pick up as much line as possible so that as you're swinging, you're connecting with the fish mid hook set and not at the bottom of your hook set, right? So high speed gear ratio is really important to wind down, set the hook, and then have lots of power for that fish to be connected. Oh, God. Is this really what we subjected ourselves to, Jeff? Working hard today, I see. What is, what has happened to this place? Here, do you want to have your moment in the uh, spotlight? Here, there's lights up. Come here, champ. What's up? I see you made it the perfect size for yourself. Yeah. Did you make it big enough? It'll fit you too. Okay. What Eventually. a sucker. <laughs> Congratulations, champ. Feel good about yourself? I am. Okay. Are you going to just wear that around the store every day? No, oh, I just wanted to. I was just going to pull an order and. <laughs> you, know, you guys were just here. Oh, just having to be in the way. This is, this is a tough place when I lose to Griff. Let's make sure that never happens again. All right, let's talk really quick about line. For me, I am always 100% fluorocarbon. Now, I know a lot of you guys like the braid to leader. Hey, whatever's working for you is fine. For me, I just like the performance of straight fluoro. If you have the right rod, I don't want braid on there because my rod's already fast. So I don't need to fasten it more with braid, right? So fluoro is like the perfect combo for me. I would say, 90% of the time, I'm in 16 or 20 pound. Okay, 16 if I'm just open water, casting around, not sure what's happening. 20 if I know there's big fish, if they're shad eaters so their teeth are sharp, there's lots of you know obstacles, brush, that kind of stuff, I'll go 20. If I'm fishing more smallmouth, open water, finesse jigs, a lot of times I'll drop down to 14. If it's really, really gnarly, I'll jump over to shooter. Okay, because shooter's gonna have a little bit more abrasion resistance to it. For everything else, I stay sniper. I like sniper because even though it doesn't have as much abrasion resistance as shooter, it's a little limper. So for me, a football jig is more about casting. I'm making long casts. I want it to throw easy. I want it to be limp. I want it to manage really, really well. And this is plenty strong, right? I'm gonna be retying this thing a lot because you're dragging that jig around rocks, around muscles, around a bunch of shit that's gonna, you know, nick it up. So, you know, I'm not so worried about the line lasting all day. 
I'm gonna be retying that thing a lot. You guys better be retying a lot. Anytime you're dragging it through a snag or over, you know, a reef or rock pile, make sure you're checking your knot, make sure you're checking for any kind of nicks in the floral. But anything in there would be great. If you're just gonna pick something, 16 pound fluoro is really tough to beat. It's just an all around jig line. All right, guys, that is a wrap on our combo of football jigs. I hope that was insightful. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed seeing the baits in the water. If you have any questions, drop a question down below in the comment section. Jeff will leave links to all the products. You wanna check any of them out closer. Until the next time, you know, on behalf of myself, my family and Jeff and everybody here, thank you guys for the business. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. We will be back soon. Hopefully it'll be me beating Griff so I don't have to see that stupid belt anymore. So until next time, peace out. Arigato.